Thank you. Just long conversation. Yeah. It, 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 it is. And you know what? You, you need to sort of politely finish up, but not rush because right. something that doesn't seem like rushing to you will seem like rushing. Yeah. yeah. It's like I, yeah. I called you for a reason. It's, a, it's a fine line. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I went through really four really quickly. Um, I didn't have any responses, and then I got that. <laughs> Well, but you know what? If you're going to be coming for coffee, that's perfect. You know what? I've got to run now, but I will. I'd, I'd love to see you for coffee, so let yeah. me give you a call back and, and yeah. let's let's. Well, she's asking back. a whole bunch of questions, right? And okay. so when I get the information, I think I'll do it on the door. Yeah, perfect. Here it is. And Wonderful. Let's have a good right? so. Courtney, you had some success. What was your success? I did. Um, I called um, my my friend who I write music, and he's, a, he's produced a whole bunch of music for me in the past. I called him up, and he said, "I said, do you know anyone who wants to buy or sell?" Like you have to call my wife. She's the one that's connected to people like this. So I called Danielle, and um, she was really happy to hear from me. And um, she's asked me to come to her office because she has a whole bunch of young people who are about 50 some odd employees of hers who are um, looking to buy. Oh, God. Awesome. And she wants me to come and do like a presentation at the office. So I thought that was awesome. cool because that could be just yeah. like. And then I also had um, a message from a, a landlord of mine years ago. Um, on LinkedIn, just saying that I see that you're in real estate, and my husband and I are ready to invest in um, a real estate, like in real estate, wow. in an investment opportunity yeah. in our main home. Um, is this something you'd be interested in helping us with? So I called her up and I said, Yes, it is. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Let me think about that. <laughs> so I yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And I'm meeting with her next week. Wow. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah, so, so you know, Courtney said something uh, at the back there, like, it's so easy when you actually get on the phone. Well, it is. It's just getting on the phone and keeping yourself getting on the phone. Because sometimes what happens is we have a little bit of a success and we run off and go work with that business and then you forget to keep calling. Mm -hmm. So when you're finished with that business, if you're having to call in, you don't have anything else behind it, which is responsible for all of those peaks and valleys all the time that most realtors really experience. So what you have to do is you have to set that call time in every single day and then go service the other business rather than sacrificing your call time to work on the business. The business is going to get your money, obviously, but so is the caller. So you have to keep that consistent no matter how busy you get. Sometimes the busier you get, the more you have to do it. Right? So it keeps you consistent. Yeah, just a good question, because you do this all the time. And what I find, and uh, maybe the other people as well, is sometimes you just, just for making the first call, not that I'm afraid to, it's just the energy that you need to generate to bring to the just call, right? Going. And sometimes you're just, right? It's like, is there a secret, like, button? Okay, turn it on. Affirmations, right? I love doing my calls first thing in the morning. Stand in front of a mirror. I love doing my calls. I love doing my calls. It's going to feel really weird, because you really don't. Yeah, but you will convince it's yourself. Going. It's like, oh, great, I call everybody now. Right? But it's just that. It's that picky, it's the initial. It's just the, and yeah. you de need to generate that energy, right? Yeah, well, you guys, like, like you all have to. You don't have a boss. Hello, guys. Sure. You don't have a boss cracking the whip. You are your own boss. So if you were to hire that boss, would you keep them? <laughs> or is the boss not running the show well enough? So you have to keep yourself motivated because nobody else will. I'll just a super simple one is I always try to just smile quickly just before I mm. smile and dial. You know, like pick up the phone and I find it really helps. Yeah, that's great. Anybody else have a, a quick success story or should we move on? Okay, selling your listing. Marketing and servicing the listing. So we're going to be covering staging, marketing, and then communication. And, you know, a, a, a possible thought that you have is, hey, our market is hot, everything sells. Well, it doesn't. And uh, even if something is hot, the more you present it, the, the better it's presented, and, and the better the, better the package is, the better you're going to do for your sellers, and they're going to be happy, and they're going to be excited. Um, okay, does anybody have a listing right now? Here? Have a listing? A couple of listings? Okay. And were they ones that, uh, you know, work in that? Uh, I actually, I wanted to grab my authenticator. Uh, I wanted to show you uh, a very good example of some very basic staging that is quite helpful. Um, so staging, think about cars, right? When you go and buy a car, You've got a brand new one, and it's got that smell, and everything's shiny, and then you kind of get back to your old car, even if it's not that old, and it's a 
<laughs> because that shiny one has now tainted everything for you with the old car. And uh, if, if you've ever tried to buy a car privately, it's the same thing, because usually the people that are selling privately, they don't present the cars as, as well. Exact correlation with houses. So whether it's a, an owner trying to sell privately and they don't know what they're doing, or if it's an agent just this, that, that doesn't really care about the presentation of the property, again, even though the market is hot for us, the better you present your listings, the better they will look compared to all of the other ones that aren't as well presented. Um, just a, just a, a question to, to some of you, maybe some of, of the new folks. Uh, are you aware, like, do you have a sense of why staging is important and the difference that it makes? Anybody? Yeah. I mean, everybody's sort of saying, okay, so everybody's saying, okay, so we know why it's important. Okay, so Lana, you tell uh, me. We went to an open house in, uh, yesterday. We went to two, actually. And the second one was uh, an apartment on Quebec Avenue. It was two bedroom, two bathroom. So we got in and we just left like, oh, you. And it was just not good because what they did, apparently old person lived there. We, we just assumed, we didn't ask any questions, but we already know. And they left the broad room in. They took the furniture away, but the bins in the broad room were deep, like, <laughs> like that. Yeah. And everything was kind of felt dusty and old, and you knew this person die here or it's going to die. You know what I mean? This kind of feeling. feeling right? So we just said with and they should have just completely uh, cleaned up everything and just had it completely empty, clean, painted, and it would be a completely different feeling. Yeah, like absolutely. I would never put an offer for unless it's much cheaper. So. Well and that's the tricky part yeah. is people will say to you, well, do I really have to do this? You know, the market's good. Can't the buyers just do it? Should be good. Yeah. Except for every thousand dollars that you put in, Mr. Seller, they will take off two thousand. So you're either going to do the work and present the property well to them, for them to be able to envision themselves in it and move in, or you're going to attract the people who are the next rappers and they want a deal. And they're going to want to be compensated for the work that you really should be doing to get the property ready. Can I give you a quick example? Just because I have a listing that's coming up, and we had the exact same conversation, because I had helped these people sell a house, buy this house, and I was selling it again. And the, meanwhile, the relative in the meantime has sold her house, a sister. But mine, you know, I only have to pay a, a percent and a half, you should use our agent, you know, da 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 And we keep saying to her, well, Nat does this for us, and Nat does that, and you know, we didn't. And I, had, and I sat down with them, and not that they were going to go the other way, but I said, you know what, they saved $7,500. I go, you're probably going to make $50,000 or more with me. I said, you know what I mean? But I actually had like the numbers in front of them, and I go, I'm just giving it to you in case you want to show your sister. But for that $7,500 you saved on the, my commission, and no staging, and da-da-da-da, so really, was it worth it to you? And, and that's, I think I should put a kind of program together like that. I think that's a really people. good idea. And, and what you guys have to get in the habit of, of uh, putting into your scripts is it's not what you pay, it's what you net. What's the point of saving 1% if you're going to potentially use 10? You're, you're not at 1% ahead, you're 9% behind. We actually have a sheet like this in our pre-listing package because people, if they, there, there's some people that will understand the value of advice and some people that won't. And some people, I think we had this discussion with you guys last week about, about FISBOs. There will be some people who, if you present that to them and you lay it out, they will get it. And they will say, yeah, you know what? Like, if that agent's going to give me a discount and not do anything, maybe my house won't present as well. And maybe I won't get that money. And if you explain it to them in those words, they'll get it. Some people never will. Okay, so one of my orders. And you cannot be able to please all of them. When I first got into the business, I showed two lofts in the same building, not realizing they were absolutely identical. One was staged and one was empty, and the difference could not have been more glaring. Like all these years later, that's what I think about. If you walk into the stage unit and they were small, it looked like 700 square feet, 650, 70, so 700 square feet, so it's kind of difficult for a potential buyer to Imagine. really know how am I going to put my furniture in there? And that unit was done so beautifully. 
and it was like it was like a completely different experience. It could not have been more striking. Well, especially that's such well a great that example, right? And yeah. uh, I mean, it wasn't your listing, so you wouldn't nope. have been able. To, so, so it's possible that the listing agent of the stage property, if they weren't able to convince their seller of of the value, maybe they took them into the empty unit and said, "Well, I would have." Yeah, 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 absolutely. I never go. I actually should have gone back and taking a look at what they sold for and how fast they sold. Because they were just like, they were on floor part and completely, same exposure. Everything, everything, everything was identical. We had a case like that uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, one of our clients, sort of past clients, had uh, a couple of years before that got into a new construction uh, condo purchase with his sister because his sister worked for the building. So it wasn't anything that he asked for our advice about, fortunately. Uh, but when he called us, uh, he said, so I bought this condo, I shouldn't have done it, but I did because it was my family. We used her realtor for the initial listing because it was one of the original realtors for the developer. So out of area, not experienced with resale. So they made all the mistakes possible. And the issue was, it was it was down at the uh, NXT, the Queensway, 105 or 103, whatever. And it was one of the units that was on the curve. I don't know if you guys have seen any of those units. Really, really awkward layout. Like, she, she said, when they finally walked through the unit, when it was ready, she thought she was going to cry. Okay, no problem. Because she thought, oh my god, like, I just cannot read floor plans, and I wouldn't have bought this if I knew. Anyway, <coughs> fast forward a couple of years later. So they had this agent who was from Markham at a discount commission who just put the unit on the, the, the market empty, and it just sat there. I think it sat there for four months. And, you know, we came in, because he called, he said, I can't do that anymore. I mean, I'm sorry I didn't call you, but I was obligated to them, whatever, whatever. Anyways, he called us and said, please help. So we had it staged. Even with the staging, I mean, we're talking about the, the space. Even with the staging and a great stager, it was a little tricky to organize everything because of this, like, really, really weird layout. But, you know, we put it on the market. We had it sold in less than three days. But it makes it makes a huge difference because especially when people live in their house, they don't understand what it's like for other people coming in to imagine themselves in it, and that's the whole point: is you want to be able to imagine yourself in it. So the goal of staging is to present this best face of the what I find what good stages do, when, especially when somebody lives there. I've seen well, situations where they, it looks like that room is staged and that room is original and it looks totally incongruent. But good stages, they sort of work and they blend this in and it looks very natural. Right. It doesn't look like all of a sudden there's 20 years ago and there's yesterday. Right, yeah, exactly. So, so this is a good example. So I'm going to show you, uh, Jackie and Fred just got a listing this week on Royal York. So I'm going to show you what the house looked like before they staged it. It was on the market three different times with another agent. Uh, and then we can see what it looks like with them. So to their credit, whoever the agent was, they did actually get professional photos. So they didn't walk around with a phone like some of them do. However, they didn't present, they didn't stage at all. So even with the professional photos, I don't know if you guys can hear this. Let's do this. So, uh, you know, a gigantic couch in a little room. And you know, even a professional photographer can't do anything with this. Right? So, a big empty dining room. Nice kitchen. But, you know, there's a bed. Wow. Woo! Oh, yeah. There's another bed. Woo -hoo! And there's an empty room. Right, so so there's you know there's this this there's the basement, there's the other part of the basement, right? So now take a look at Jackie and Fred's finished product. Same house. So now look at that living room. Oh, wow. see the difference. So much like Katia just said, you look at them side by side, like it's a different house. Yep. So you can't better. even you can't even tell that it's the same house, wow. right? What? How much does something like that change the whole thing? Everything. 
everything. And I don't, I don't think they did. Uh, yeah, so all they did was the, all they did was dress up the beds, right? Just, just, just a, a, a little bit, so it's not smack in the middle of the room. So it didn't really have to do that much. Exactly. So, so this would have cost the owners and look like put smaller furniture into rooms that are small. Did they do painting as well, or? Uh, I, I, I'm not sure about that. Um, but you know, oh my gosh, so much better. right? Oh. Like wow. it's it's a different it's a different world. Uh, the 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 challenge is some people will call you in and they'll say, okay, what do I need to do? Just tell me, make my list, and they'll go and do everything. The challenge is the people that don't have that mindset. So it's helping them understand that everything that they put in should give them double their investment. So if you put in three or four thousand dollars into staging. You should see ten to fifteen thousand dollars at least on the return. So when people say to us, so I mean, we we sometimes have people call us in and, and tell us everything that they're going to do to the house. I like to say, no, well, do this and that, but not this and this and this, because every dollar you put in, you want at least two out. With staging, I think you probably have to look at even a greater return, like probably three to one, which is, like you said, with a good stager, very realistic. But there's so many stagers out there that you do want to pick carefully. Melanie will know that with her background experience. It's, you know, you don't want to shove a whole bunch of furniture into a room because that's not staging. Well, staging is presenting the house. Yeah, you, I mean, you've got the personal experience with that, Melanie. Yeah, I think that's the, because you said why would we stage, it's, it's what, do you, what does staging mean? Because I think it's gotten sort of a different perspective. Like people go, it's furniture. It's putting furniture in a room. If that wall was black, and you put the furniture in the room, it's still not going to look good, and the customer spent it. So staging is a mixture of a lot of things going from the overall condition of the home. If their paint is um, peeling and you've got no lighting, you can spend all the money you want on furniture, but yeah, it's not it's really going, going to help. Difference. So you have to kind of complement all of the elements together in order to make sure you've got the right. Okay, two the, other, the, the other challenge is, well, if this is going to cost me this much to stage it, I might as well buy the furniture and take it into my next house and you have to know enough to say well financially that would certainly look as if that's the better decision but you have to think about what Melanie just said as far as complementing everything so the way I put it to people is decorating and interior design is putting your character into the house staging is taking them out so you have to and and they'll go oh Oh, well, why don't I? Why don't I want to be here? Like, why don't? What, why is? Why do I have to get out of the house? Well, because buyers, uh, me, me, my personality and my taste. Because buyers want to envision themselves in it. They don't want to see you in it. Because when you put your house on the market, it ceases to be a home and it becomes a house to everybody else. And you have to make it look like a house so that they can see how to make it a home. Yeah. And the other thing too is when you look at those pictures, and let's say you know. We're in a market where you know a lot of them are selling within the week. The ones that aren't, what happens as an agent if you have if you've given any kind of commitment on what you're going to pay into the staging for them, and it lasts longer, what I found is that some agents will come back to me and say, you know what, it's been 30 days. So how about we take out like all of this stuff, and how about I just leave, and it ends up being looking like the first pictures, because they can't afford to keep what they had in there. So that's the other thing you have to make sure you are thinking about when you're looking at selling from the market. When we talked to Kate, was it Kate? Kate, yeah. Kate. She, there was a good conversation going, going on regarding, and I don't know if everybody was here, that's why I want to mention, there was a good conversation about going on how do you handle who's going to pay for staging. And somebody said that, uh, I don't know what's her if somebody from the group said, look at it in terms of say to your client, would you agree that if you were going to redo your bathroom, that would add value to your home? The same principle applies to staging. If you do stage your home, it will add value to your home. Now, you would not expect me to pay for your bathroom renovations. That's very good. In the same yeah, way, you wouldn't like expect me to pay for staging because you are the one who ultimately is going to receive the benefit from that. And I haven't scripted that properly out, but it's worth 
really scripting it out well because the logic is just so sad. Yeah, absolutely. And I think if you can get away with that objection handler, that's great. What we have to think about in our market is the number of agents that are including staging mm -hmm. in their fees and some of them are even discounting and then including staging. Yes. So you ha I know it's insane. Uh, the commission wars are rampant. So you have to figure out from a value perspective if it's worth your saying, okay, I will take my non-reduced commission, whatever that is for you, and I will also stage. Except you put some caveats in that, like, you know, if, if we get an offer that's that you know the market is, is telling you the house is worth and you choose not to accept it, have some sort of confidence like paying back. Um, yeah, I guess it's a different conversation if you're in competition. It is if you're not. Exactly. If you're not, then I would then certainly, I mean, that's great. And then it, even if you have to pay for staging, one of the comments that we made in the Works with a lot of other things is to take it out of the commission, out of your commission, once yeah. the home sells. Yeah, that's that's good because if it doesn't, you know, stuck with the bill for which it gets, you have no revenue. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hang on, me I had uh, two things. Could you provide the MLS number to that? Uh, that's a oh, really great sure. visual. Like. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, so it is. Um, well, it's 128 Royal York. Don't, don't use the MLS number because that's not going to give you the old listing. So, I, but I can find the same address. Just, what, but if you just if you put in 128 Royal York, it'll give you the history. Okay. Well, do you know what it costs to, to stage that? Uh, I, I, you, you can ask Jackie and Fred for the exact numbers. I would say probably based on that, I mean, they did living room, dining room, they did basement, uh, and a couple of the bedrooms. It's, it, you know, hard to tell, but probably maybe three to four thousand. Well, that's the that's the initial amount. So the way staging works is you pay an initial amount that has the furniture rental in it, uh, but the biggest chunk is the actual time and setup of the stager to come in and do the consult and you know bring her or his expertise uh, into it. So the second month, if the house doesn't sell after the first month, there's there's just the rental fee, which is typically a lot less. So it'll depend on how much you think sixty percent of your cost. How much? Sixty percent of your cost is the rent. Is the rent? It's going to be your yeah from a long. Well, like, I, guess it, I guess it would depend on how much you actually brought in. Yeah. Um, what would you say in 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 my area where I live? There are a lot of homes that are being demolished. Um, so they're older bungalow style homes, and almost all of them that sell end up being torn out and bigger homes put in. Excuse me. Sorry. Would you stage even those, even though that most likely they're probably going to be torn not. out? Probably not. I would probably just give them a really, really good cleaning, pick up the, you know, broad loom, the dirty carpet. You know, we, we've done a lot of our teardowns. We will have removed the old carpet and just clean the floors. Because even if the floors aren't great, like just having hardwood versus 50-year-old carpet makes a big difference. I'll give you an example, okay, since we're on this. I don't want to <coughs> sidetrack too, too much, but um, the, uh, is Gladys here? Yeah, there's Gladys. So Gladys and Carla sold our uh, Montessin last month, and that was an owner who had lived there for 50 years, um, had lots of cats, oh, no. uh, you know, uh, in and out. <coughs> so all of these floors that you see, like they were, I mean, you can even see a little bit of the old, old glue, right? But I mean, this house was wall to wall stuff. wasn't Wasn't really a hoarder. Like there wasn't stuff piled up. But I mean, there was old furniture. There was, you know, you could barely see the counter in the kitchen. Um, you put the stuff into storage, or no? The stuff that was left in the house was actually just the pieces that we thought would look good. Everything else just got either donated or, or thrown out. Um, but I mean, if you look at this kitchen, like it was, it was covered. It was covered with everything. And you know, you might have people say, "Well, the house is going to be torn down anyway." Sure, but do you want it to appeal to the one person who's willing to buy it because nobody else will, or do you want it to appeal to a lot of people and generate enough interest that we can get multiple offers? And that's how you do it. I mean, this this wasn't quote unquote staged, but it had to be presented. 
Yeah, sorry. Um, the, is there a formula, like when you're talking to a listing client, like for how much they should spend on staging? Is there a formula? What's an average no. cost? Um, it depends on the house, it depends on yeah. the size, it depends on the price point. You're not going to do the same amount of staging on a $400,000 condo that you will on a million dollar house. Right, so I don't think there's a formula. I think what you need to look at is what am I selling and what is it going to cost me the uh, owner to stage? I mean, certainly, at you know, for, for newer agents, I would I would probably not be looking at you paying for the staging. You know, we're talking about some of us, you know, who have had you know, have a steady stream of business and we have that cash flow to pay for the staging. I, I certainly wouldn't recommend it to people who are just starting out. I have a friend who said she'd do it for free because she's trying to start her staging career. Great. Which is great. Hopefully she doesn't. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's great. <laughs> so she can cut her teeth on, on you <laughs> and you we'll can do it together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just don't, like don't tell your clients that it's free. Yeah. You want to show them the end value. It doesn't doesn't, they don't have to know that you didn't put in money. I guess I can just phone stagers and kind of get an idea of what they don't charge. Talk to Melanie. Right. She's Sixty-three percent of, of people, and again, take that with the caveat of what Irene just said about the overall condition. It's a tear down and so forth. Are going to spend five to seven thousand to get their house market ready, right? Lighting, painting, four bedroom, twenty-five hundred square foot house. A friend of mine just did it for fifty-seven hundred dollars just to do the painting and stuff. So. You know, that's just to get that market ready, and then you've got your furniture type costs. But you have to take a look at exactly what Irene said. How much are you, yeah. You don't want to be spending so much that and they don't get it, it they're not going to get it back. Conversely, you don't want to be spending a little bit and not have it be enough, because then you've spent money on something that's not going to get them the benefit. Yeah. So it's that balance of finding the right. It's the condition right of the home. That's what people are starting to look at first, right? So like Irene said, you can call it whatever you want, but if you're going to take a tear down home and you're ripping out the garage, that's staging. You're staging that type of home in its best light. It doesn't always go to sort of like furniture oh. yeah, just, uh Just wondering like sort of when you're doing a listing presentation, I mean, do you normally do options for the clients? Like we could either go this way or we could go this way kind of thing, or do you kind of just, you know, sort of take control of the situation and say we need to do this? Because when I, you know, when I did like my list, for example, my clients were pretty resistant to going in with staging, and so I, I sort of led them down that path. They, they got there eventually, but I sort of said to them, you know, we can, you know, it's up to you. You guys are in the driver's seat, but these are the options. This is what I think will be the best thing. So if you want to take my advice, we can go this way. And at the end of the day, you know, like, if you don't want to take my advice. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think that's the safest thing to do. Uh, you don't ever want to put yourself in a position where you tell the clients this is what they must do because even if it's true they might not appreciate that from you and either they won't enjoy the experience or they might end up not working with you so I would certainly go that first route give them the options this is what I think as a professional will help us sell your house for more money ultimately it's your decision what we found in the past I mean show them examples like Royal York Right, and it would be really good to see what that house sells mm -hmm. for. Because if it sells, and how fast? You know exactly. So, mm -hmm. so that's even better if you have that 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 history of success. You know, no success, no success, no success. Make a change, stage, and boom, look at what we've got. But I'll, yeah, I'd always give them the option. You don't want to be shoving anything down people's throats. And that might help as well. I think in terms of the discussion, do pays for it kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, listen, that's a touchy subject right now. There's, there's no doubt about it. Uh, you have to sort of, you have to weigh that and, and figure out what situation you're in and what the best option is going to be. In, in your listing presentation, do you uh, go in with the stager as well? Because for example, like you meet the seller and say, this is the stage, like part of the presentation, you bring in the sell, the stager. Yes. Oh, you do that? All yeah, so, so uh, we we always include a staging consultation with our listing presentation. Really? At, yeah. Well, it's a couple hundred bucks, usually, right? At yeah, some hundred. other point, though, right? It's not like you walk in. No, 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 no,
you met, you met the first part, right? Like for our yes. Presentation. Yeah. Right. So you and and then you pay for the, the consultation, and then they go. To, that's after you actually have the list. Have the list. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We don't pay for anything. Yeah. Until right. we, we actually we won't, won't even do anything until the list is signed. Like not help them arrange anything or, or otherwise you're giving stuff for free. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So if they're not ready to go to market, we sign two listings. We'll sign an MLS listing for you know a month down the road and an exclusive listing that's active right now so that you're under contract. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right in. You know the other the other thing is uh, <laughs> not quite on, on the staging line, but what we found helpful with those two types of listings is it, it can help you with your commission objections. So you know what, we'll sign this listing at the MLS listing at 5% and while we're getting the house ready, we will have an exclusive listing at a reduced commission. That's great. And and it's just like, uh, well, but you know, can't you uh, reduce that? No, I'll reduce it here. <laughs> so if we can sell it here, we can we can save you some money. Right? And then if you can double end it, I mean we just did that at a listing in our farm. Right? Fortunately these people they were like totally not commission focused. So it wasn't a good example, but that's how we presented it. Oh, oh wow. That's great. It won't always work now, but it'll work more often. Yeah. Than not doing anything at all, not giving them the option. Well, like so, what do you do on the exclusive in terms of We just want to oh. sell it and double end it before you incur any marketing expenses. Why not? I mean, at our, like, you know, obviously nobody wants to be discounting their fees. But you also have to make a business decision. You know, 4% of yeah, 700 or 800,000 is better than 5% of. <coughs> um, are you using the coming soon to MLS? Yeah. So how does that work? Is that you put it on for like a week coming soon to MLS? Yeah. It depends. If it's going to be a really, really, really hot property, we don't do the coming soon because we want the marketing exposure, right. and we want the multiple offers. If it's something that's you know maybe won't be quite as hot, then yeah, we'll do it like a week or two, depending on how long it'll take to to, to prep it. Okay. Because what you don't want to do, you don't want to sell it in a day and lose the marketing opportunity. Plus, you're not always sure that you're getting the best price for your client. Right? That's why we always take our exclusive listings at a higher price. So if it's $6.99 on MLS, we will do like $7.50 or $7.60 on exclusive. Oh. Yeah. So here, I'm getting you a higher price and you're paying more fees. <coughs> no loss. No, no, uh, so the coming soon to MLS is the higher price? Yes, because you're not doing an offer hold -off. Okay. The whole point of an offer hold off is to, to 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 generate interest in competition. And that's why when, when we sign an exclusive listing at a higher price, they say, but is that reasonable? And we'll say, well, no. But you don't have to be reasonable on an exclusive listing. You have to be reasonable on MLS. You can't be overpriced on MLS. You have to be fair. You have to be at market value. But on an exclusive, it doesn't matter. And if somebody wants to come in and buy it before it goes to market, they need to pay you a premium for not for not going to market. That's great. Yeah. Did you get that? Yeah, I did. That was great. Okay. Uh, do, when you sign the uh, exclusive and then you sign the uh, MLS version, are, yep. is it the same copy or are you reduce no, it? No, it's copies? two completely different copies because in the, uh, right at the top of the page, they have to initial whether it's MLS or exclusive. But I so thought maybe two, you could edit it. No, no, two completely separate copies because yeah, the, the exclusive will be, uh, and, and like you don't have to do a lower fee, right? Like if there's no commission objections at all, like you don't, don't even have to do that. Do they, do they overlap, sorry? The two contracts, or does one expire when another one begins? When the MLS date starts, it supersedes anything on the exclusive contract. Okay. So we will typically do the exclusive for longer than we yeah. need to. Okay. Uh, and but the MLS, as soon as that starts, the uh, exclusive is not allowed. I've done it before with it, where I had the initial the same document, but on the MLS box with the date next to it. When it went MLS. I would keep two separate documents. Yeah. Yeah. Safe. Yep. I don't know your name. Costa. Costa. Um, in terms of uh, exclusive listing, um, how would you market it since it's not on the MLS? We like, don't. In any tricks? No, we don't. Just a sign. It's just a sign. Well, and sometimes it's not even the sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it, it's really, it's really just to get them under contract, and you know, we'll, we'll spread it through our network of clients, but there is no. 
Like we don't present it as we will market it during the exclusive period. This is a contract that, that shows me that you're committed to me while I'm helping you prep the house. And at the same time, if I come across somebody in the next two to three to four weeks, however long it takes us to, to sell the house, if I can get them to pay a higher price and have you pay a lower fee, there's no loss to you. But no, we don't market. Um, when do you decide to put the sign on? Is it more the seller's feeling? Uh, usually about a week. Yeah, the exclusive sign? Yeah. So the day you sign, you don't put one on, you wait about a week? It'll depend. I don't want the sign up there for too, too long before it goes MLS. Okay. Because then, the, then it just looks stale. Because okay. the public generally doesn't know what the difference is. Like four weeks before this? Yeah, that's a lot. That's yeah. a lot? Yeah, that's yeah. yeah that's too much. So yeah. what would you do? Like, a week or two. A week or two? Max. Okay. Yeah. So the, the uh, MLS listing says that the listing will start to Yes, no problem. So um, I know that the general public don't really get it, but if, what's the difference between it? It's, it's helpful to get the exclusive um, then for, you know, for the commission thing, for the pricing and so forth. But, but um, commencing, uh, couldn't they say to you, well, you, you don't need an exclusive because it's commencing on two weeks from now we can get you the house do. ready the listing isn't it doesn't start until the commencement date you don't have a listing if it's two weeks from now somebody else can come and list them today right? yes really? that's why you need the exclusive yeah i know I wow have, yeah i didn't know that yes mm. yeah that's why you, and, and you can't actually leave the date blank on them last no. sometimes no, we do you that. gotta have a date because if you don't have a date it's not a valid contract but commencing i thought commencing was was I have the listing yep. and, and two weeks from now it's coming out. Oh, the date of wow. the listing. Yeah, so be careful. Because it, you know what, if you if you have clients that love you and trust you, it's really not going to make a difference because if another agent tries to swoop in and you get it from you, they'll just say, Well, I have a listing, they won't know what the commencement date is. But if your client's marginal and they think they can get another deal somewhere else, They'll say to another agent, oh, well, the date on this is, you know, March 1st. Wow. And if the agent knows the rules, they can say, well, it's February 5th. Let's do a deal now that doesn't start until March 1st. Be careful. Or if the neighbor says, I'll pay. Look at, like, yeah, come out. This, yeah. Like this, I mean, this is worst case scenario. Like, it's not something that's a regular practice. Like, you just want to bulletproof your own transaction. Well, that gives you more if you put, out, get the Especially put, if you put as lot of time and help and yeah. advice into prepping them yeah. to you get to MLS. That, you need that commitment. You need to have that certainty. Wow. That I thought I had the commitment. Huh. So it's not like a buyer rep agreement where no. another agent's not allowed to, like once they sign it. Yeah, but that's not commitment. It's out, as long as it's outside of the date, they can do whatever they Sorry. want. Sorry. OK, we're, we're getting a little off topic. But so last question. <laughs> I'm just sort of confused. Buyer rep has. No, no. I. Oh yes, yeah. Okay. So a seller representation agreement. That's that's just the listing agreement. That's, that's, listing agreement. that's, that's not ironclad until it actually goes on the Well, well, it just depends on the date. So if you sign a listing, so if you sign an MLS listing today, yeah. with today's date, it has to go into the system within what? What is it? A day or two. Four hours. Hours. I don't even know. Yeah. So whatever. Like let's just call it three business days. I don't know if that's accurate. It's not even. Whatever. It's less than that. Okay, two business hours. days. Right, so if, if you have an MLS listing that, that has today's date on it, it has to be in the system within that time frame. So if you wait a week to put it in, and then put it in, and it says seven days on the market, you could get into trouble. It won't even take it. Oh yeah, it might not even, yeah. It doesn't take it. It, had, like the, it the, no, it'll say the commencement it. date is too far back. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, make sure it's clear what your commencement date is, and if it's anything longer than a few days, get that exclusive agreement. Okay, let's move on. Um, thoughts from you. Uh, which rooms do you think should be staged? Which rooms do you think will yield the best, the best results? Living room, dining room. Yeah, I think I probably put master budget at the bottom of the list, but <laughs> like certainly, like if, if if they're not as budget conscious, main floor. Yeah, main, yeah, main floor. Good. But you do. I mean, like Katya said earlier, you want to be careful because you don't want that the, the rest of the house to not look like. It has to look like it all has. That's your first impression too, right? When you walk into the door. 
Yeah, absolutely. So exterior is most important because some people will uh, they'll want to drive by with it before seeing the house. They don't like the exterior. They'll just they'll not even go in. So I mean, certainly if if there's resistance on anything else. So so Paul. So you say like, is it is it an option or not? I mean, I would say exterior is not an option, right? Like I would just say that, that's got to be done. Yeah. Absolutely. Whether it's painting a door, cleaning up the shrubs. Or, well, there are some things for sure. I think. Yeah. Door yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You need to get them in the door at least. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. But they also say that people make up their mind on whether or not they're interested in the house within the first fifteen seconds of walking in. So that first impression that they get is going to make or break whether or not they're mentally going to go any further with this place, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, exactly. 